Good morning my friends, Roger Mudfoss University once again and doing a little bone study from years ago and it comes up in a video by Phenomenal Travel Videos. We're going to discuss how bones become fossilized and what we're going to be looking at right here is an absolutely fabulous video. He always does a good job, this guy. I really don't know his name is, to be perfectly honest with you, but very good work. And um, I'm just going to let it play for a second, and then I'm going to show you what he discovered. And you should come up and watch this whole video. It is by um, Phenomenal Travel Videos. And uh, this just went up a couple days ago, 28th of June. And here we go. The Bloodstone. He was searching the history of the Nagas and was directed to an area that had to have a, bl a split bloodstone, it was called, and it had to be within a hundred miles of a certain area, and he focused in on this specific area. And I will show you what he found. Hey guys, in the previous episode, the tribes in the forest told me I could learn more about the Nagas or Valier if I could find a giant split rock within a hundred mile radius. They had heard about the giant split rock from their ancestors, from their previous generations, but they had no idea where this is actually located. I could find several giant split rocks around the world when I performed a Google search but I could not find anything online within a hundred mile radius from the Jawadu Hills. So I'm going to have to start searching by physically exploring the hundred mile radius. The search is taking me far and wide. I'm exploring some of the very remote parts of the world where there is nothing, no trees, no buildings, and no human population. Will I find this giant split rock somewhere here? I see no trace of any rocks nearby. I have been searching for many days. All right, I'll, I'm going to cut to the chase. You, you should come up and watch it because he, he, the guy did a great job. He eventually finds this split rock by doing a search on the names of these creatures. And the towns came up, and sure enough, he went there and looked, and here's what he found. All right, so here he goes. He comes out here, and he finds this giant split rock. Well, it's really not a split rock. It's two separate rocks. And this one here, you see that little spot that's holding this gigantic rock? Well, that is what's called a ligament attachment. We're going to go over that. This is a, a bone that is still surrounded by some tissues and coming from deep in the ground there's an arterial tube that is cleared now and still has some blood in there here and there and it does leak out when the water pressure gets high enough to bring it up at certain times of the year now we're going to look at this closer all right this is the kind of tissue that's leaking off the sides of of this these rocks that's blood. Now, that is some form of tissue. Now, you have many, many layers of skin and um, fascia. You have the superficial fascia, the deep fascia, all this kind of stuff. And they are layers, 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 layers. And this is eroding away, and these layers are chipping away, and the blood and the slippery synovial sheaths and the mucous membranes that are between them are now exposing themselves. Now, that blood is coming out of here, and he goes up and he says it looks like oil. Well, oil, it's because it's fossil fuel. It's blood, and that is what we pump out of the ground, fossil fuel, which was the blood of our ancestors. That cap was on top, and they say, which is a funny cap sitting right on top of where that blood comes out from the top of this, what they call a, a split rock, which is its tissue surrounding bone. Let's take a look at that. Alright, this is looking down from the top to that 
place where it leaked the blood out and we could see the blood running down the side. This is that capstone that sits on the top. It's the same texture as below. Jody and I were looking at this together and she says, you know, that's the same texture. I say, yeah, I know. It's got that same lines going across there and everything. How could this be? Somebody put that up there and it's, it's, it's the same as this material? How is this? How is it possible? Did somebody put it up there or is that natural? How would it be natural for something like that just to fall down on top of that stone? So let's see what he has to say about it. Here it goes. That's the cap on top of this big stone. The particles, which is probably why locals think it is blood and call it bloodstone. It is but blood. But what is surprising is that there is something on top which looks like a lid covering an opening. Okay. A lid covering an opening. Well, this is the top of a bone, and it's the top of a bone just like this. Uh, and I did some research on this. I just showed you some things, and this is the cap. <laughs> just exactly like this. Look, it even has the same line in it and everything. Look, that's the cap that sits on top of a bone. That is just what happens. They separate just like that. When you when they get boiled off, you can see you see the line right there. That's what happens. They get they get separated right off, and they boil off, and that's what happens to this cap. And that cap sat right down on top of there. Now, these are ligaments. You see that? Now I I just did some research to try to figure out what goes on with these as they petrify, and the ligaments there they are tough. Now. In most cases, those ligaments will not stay because they will be invaded and destroyed. Anyway, I did, uh, well, let me just show you this. Bones, that, that's what happens. The heads of them disassociate, and that was what we just saw up there. And then, of course, you have all kinds of different structures within them. And, uh, bird bones are hollow, and... Uh, and then you got something like this. I can't even remember what the hell that is. <laughs> it's just strange. I don't know what it is. But it has one of those caps. They all have it. Well, not all of them. It depends on the... It depends on how the bone sets into... You know, like that doesn't have a cap. A bone sits into this. It just depends on what kind of a bone and where it is in the body and, and how it attaches and, and then how the blood is fed into it. They have these little areas that come up through the bone sections are called lacunas and all kinds of different things going on that people really haven't thought about too much in a in in the realm of mud fossils and that's what i'm trying to understand now why did why don't why don't we find the bones how come you never see a bone in a mud fossil well i've explained this it's because these bones in you are covered with a membrane. A membrane is like a plastic bag that surrounds all the bones in your body. Every single bone in your body has a plastic bag around it called fascia. It's not plastic, but it's fascia. And that fascia is a fabric coating. Well, I'm going to show you what fascia is. Hold on. Alright, that's fascia. Fascia coats everything, you know, and it's not always looks exactly like this. Sometimes it's a different, it's very thin membranes. It depends on what it's coating. But in the meat, in the muscle, this is what it looks like. And I will show you one in the mud fossil. All right, that's a mud fossil. That is that same fascia tongue that you just saw before. And they come up and they hold a big chunk of muscle into the, all the fascia in your body. Because the fascia in your body, which they have, now we're starting to look into. When I got into this, there was nobody looking into fascia. It was just a few people in Germany looking into it for muscle pain, for pains in your back and all this stuff. That, and deep fascia is a, is a real serious problem with pain. It knots up, it tightens up, it causes all kinds of issues. And they, they call it rolfing and all kinds, you know, they, anyway. This stuff is extremely tough, fibrous, and it coats everything in your body. And that's what you look for in the mud fossils. And everybody's going around and looking, they're seeing all these things, and they're saying, ooh, ooh, it looks like this, it looks like that. Well, we can tell what it looks like, and that's what we're going to do right now. Everybody, well, not everybody, but most of the guys that are, are, are working with me now are going to get, they're all getting these microscopes that are like this. These little tiny microscopes. 
You put them in, now they got them to attach to the phones, I guess. That, that's what Greg is telling me. He's looking at Tyson just got one of these that, um, for a laptop. But I guess you can get them for almost any device now. You go out and you look at these things closely. Like this over here. You look at that closely, you are going to see the fascia fabric on there. This, is a, this has been DNA certified. <clears throat> it's a human lung. Blood fossil. And that is where the blood comes out. That's another one of these tongues. You see that? That's another one of these tongues. All right. now, there's blood all over this thing. That's the depression of the heart. It's a left lung. That's the, the, um, you know, the way the lobe's set up. And this is the fascia, pleura, fascia, synovial sheaths, whatever you want to call them. They're the membranes that coat everything. So, it's pretty obvious what we got going here. It's time to investigate this. It's an absolutely fascinating topic. Plus, mineralogy, they should be jumping all over this. Because you want to find gold? I'll show you where some gold is. 